Hi, it's Metal Dave Wakeham here for a fresh heavy rhythm. And today we're going to do something special and I'm going to show you how to make riffs, how to create riffs, how to build riffs, that sort of thing. Now this is completely unrehearsed and everything is done completely on the spin here. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start right from scratch, right from a pencil, pencil line and then construct it as I go. Now this is one part in a series that I intend to do dedicated towards songwriting and this can help with any genre especially thrash metal as that's what we're talking about <laughs> First thing I like to do is come up with a picking rhythm. This is this is not always I don't always use this approach, but oftentimes, and the important thing for me in order to make this really work, in order for me to really feel it and to really get into the vibe, because the vibe is important for me to actually really feel the energy of what I'm trying to create. Okay, so I like a nice heavy sound. Then I start with the picking rhythm, so so it's so that 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 is the picking rhythm that I'm going to be using. Okay, and then sometimes I kind of like uh, experiment with some different sort of uh, tempos, if you like. So I might just do all it to be a nice slow riff. Or do I want to go faster? Or do I want to do it in between them two? There's a lot of ways in, you, in which you can do this. So it's a matter of playing around a bit until you find a sort of tempo that you really feel that you want to put out there. Because the important thing is to express real emotion from the heart, real honesty, and let it come to you, that sort of thing. And it's not really something you can plan out, not really. It's just something you do, and then it should come to you. Sometimes I might like to decide what sort of a key they'll, not, they'll want to play this particular picking rhythm in, which makes the whole riff usually. And now oftentimes it's pretty damn cool to sort of like chug on the bottom string. Or if you feel like playing it in a higher key, like A. Same sort of thing follows, and it can also happen for with just single notes. You know, sort of pick a key sort of thing, you know. And sometimes in a process, other things can sort of pop out as well. Other ideas think, oh, that sounds like a really good idea, I'll use that. But, anyway, but in general, what I like to do is decide what key to sort of play in. But just for the, just, just, just for the, purpose of this lesson I'm going to stick with the bottom string here so what, what usually helps me to actually create the riff even further to start building on it is to take the picking rhythm like this one here and normally I like to record that and play that for as long as I possibly can you know, repeat it loads and loads of times, and then I can listen back to it, just that ordinary bog standard picking rhythm, and then I can, and it allows me to actually grab, to actually grasp the actual vibe of what's actually coming out of that riff, and then I'll be able to decide, well, it needs something, it needs something else, and that is where I start to build on it. And as the process of this video has developed, um, what I've got next is on top of the picking rhythm I've now got a chord now what I'm actually working on is somewhere in the F position now sometimes other chord voicings might sound good you can do this and they can be it doesn't always have to be in F it could be in any key at all it can be in G it can be here it can be there 
And it doesn't always have to be one chord either. It can be a multitude of different things. But like I say, it's all a matter of listening and and recording and, and jamming all the time. Right, now what I've got here is a beginning of a riff. So it's kind of like this here. Based, all based around the picking rhythm that I selected. Now, small, small, subtle, small, subtle adjustments do happen, and you've got to allow it to happen, and sort of like not think too much about what you're doing, and just go because the vibe is extremely important. It really is. So, however it goes, go with it. And as I did say before, the importance is to keep jamming something over and over and over. Unless you've got like a clear idea in your head, but as we're talking about riff building here, the idea is to is to build any kind of riff, even if it's just a box standard idea that you that's coming that's come to you. Get it down, record it, repeat it loads and loads of times over when you're recording it, and then listen back to it and listen to it for long enough, and then that'll allow you enough time to form an idea in your head of what else the riff could do with. Okay, so now. There is a basic idea for a riff which something which goes something like this. Now, different variations can be done on the actual riff, but the idea is to, whatever ideas that you collect together, is get them down, and like I say, repeat them over and over and over while you're recording them, and listen back to the entire thing. If it takes five minutes long, ten minutes long, whatever, listen to the entire thing, then you'll get an idea into your head, think, well, I could change that bit, I could chop that bit up, I could do, you know, you could make, make, make adjustments and arrangements where you think needs it. Now, varying subtle nuances and different degrees of technicality can actually affect the dexterity of your playing. Thus, it can determine the speed and tempo that you end up playing the riff at. And this is going to work out differently for different people and for different ways you're going to play the riff. It can change it all. It can, it can change all the time. But anyway, this is where you got to. Now, when you're building a riff. When you're adding a, a new technique at any given time, it's always a good idea to slow yourself down, slow down how you're playing the riff in order to actually incorporate the new technique so you don't keep making mistakes all the time. And of course, this can be a difficult, difficult process, but sometimes it can be easier the slower you do things. And then it, you can please yourself about how fast you want to play it. Okay, so if I show you a couple of examples here of the outcome of the riff I've got so far, and of course, you can also hear the difference in tonality. And if you like the tonality of playing something slower where it's a lot easier, or if you like to play it faster, and you like to, and of course, that will again change the, change the approach that you develop toward, towards your riffing and make it sound different. And of course, it will determine the exact outcome that you are looking for. Okay, onto the slower version of the riff that we have so far, and I use this particular approach because I think it sounds better. <laughs> And now for the fast part, and you'll notice that I've made some subtle changes to the approach to this riff because I think it sounds better this way too. <laughs> Either way, you've got to use your ears and you and decide for yourself exactly how you want the riff to sound like you know, according to how you feel inside and what you want to express and what you want to say, conveying the kind of message 
and vibe you want to put across to your audience. Now this video is just the beginning, it's just a guide in order to get you started on riff writing. Now the process can be as difficult or as easy or as complicated or as technical or whatever outcome. It's, it's up to you how you make it at the end of the day. And there's mil there's a million more ideas I could come up with, and I could make this riff can sound I could make this riff sound completely different if I really wanted to. But as I wanted to make, keep this video at a certain length of time, I did I decided not to go that far. But the most the most important thing when you're writing a riff is it comes from the heart. You play from inside, and you don't think too much. You just jam and you enjoy yourself, and. And like I say, it's all about repetition, repetition of a certain rhythm. You can start with the picking rhythm, you can start with the chord, you can start with a scale, you can start with a single note melody, you can start with whatever you want. As long as you start with this, start with, if you do it in stages and build up, unless you have a particular riff in your head already, which the chances are it's, it probably sounds like somebody you've listened to, but at the same time, you can always change that as well, because there are no rules, there are no limits anywhere. Okay, so the important thing is you make a riff that you believe it rocks and it makes you feel something. It's extremely important that you feel it. You feel it deep inside you and you enjoy it. You really get off on it when you're playing it. And also another important factor is when you're playing in a band that all the other guys feel it the same way as you do. And of course, if they have any ideas to, in, in order to, you know, when you're jamming through all this stuff, Repetition is important there as well because somebody else might want to make a little adjustments here or there. Somebody might have suggestions and all that kind of thing. All this stuff is quite important too. So, and again, this is just about the main riff or about one riff that you have for one song. And the idea is you keep repeating this process over and count, count with as many riffs as you possibly can whenever you get the freedom to do so. Okay, I hope, this, I hope this video lesson helps and good luck in riff writing and really thrash it out and stay heavy metal.